Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, David. Oh, Claudia. Don't make fun. I feel just the way I sound. Is that good? Oh, it's superlative. Mm Mm-hmm. Just look at the view from this window. Must I now? Well, you have to get up sooner or later, Lazy Bones. Then later. You're missing a beautiful view. Mm, Describe it to me. Would you like it in prose or poetry? Prose, please. Prose, please. Mm. Well, let me see now. Well, the view is all of New York stretching out. Buildings, as far as I can see, all gray and shining in the sun. No trees, no grass, no scenery? Mm. This is not Eastbrook, David. This is New York. No scenery, just a view. Here you rave. No one will know you're a New Yorker. Bred, but not born. Is it a nice day out, Miss Bread? All sunshine, no clouds. But it's going to be a scorcher, Who hmm? cares? Not I, said the little red hen. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> oh, honestly, I think New York sometimes is the most beautiful place in the whole world. Is today one of those sometimes? Today is. <laughs> I don't hear any birds or crows or cows or roosters. Just car horns, the screech of brakes, and the rumble of traffic way down below on the street. Those are nice sounds, too. They're not good for a steady diet as as crows and cows. But for today, they're perfect. And as for this hotel, it's the most divine hotel I ever stayed in. Thank you. What is it about hotels that's so exciting, David? Oh, you ring a bell. There's the bellboy. Yeah. You pick up a telephone. There's the telephone girl. Magic. It's the mysterious service run by people who have nothing else to do but make you, Mrs. David Naughton, comfortable. I guess that's it. That's it. I think I like best the way orange juice comes in a glass sitting in a bowl of ice. (laughs) Or maybe the olives and celery with every meal. Or clean sheets every night. We've only been here one night. So we have. David, it was an inspiration to stay over. This morning I feel like a different woman. Hardly married at all. Oh, David, I don't think I ever loved you more. What one night in New York will do, hmm? Darling. Oh, come on over here and look at New York with me. Come oh, on. I'd rather look at you. That's only because you're too lazy to get up and come over to the window. Now, I see everything you see, but I, I see it in your face. What do you see? Everything in the world I want. I'm glad we stayed in town, too. I feel as if I were somebody else. You are a romantic. I'm a lot romantic, and it's all your fault. Now, I better get up. Romantics starve in this world. Oh, I don't think I'd even mind starving this well, morning. Try starving and see how you like it. All right. Well, what are you going to do all day? Well, I'm going to stay in New York all day long. What do you think of that? Hmm. And I'm going back to Eastbrook with you this evening. No, whatever you like. Love to stay in New York. I don't feel like ever going home. I don't blame you. And what are you going to do with yourself all day? Oh, uh, let me see. Till when is this suite paid for? Three o'clock, I guess. I'll stay here till then. Oh, you want your money's worth. Every cent of it, every (laughs) cent. Then, let's see, um... Hey, I wonder if Julia's in town. Probably not. She's always either in Newport or Long Island in the summer. Maybe she's in town. What on earth for? Mm, dentist or something. Don't look at me like that. You can get a toothache in the summer, too. (laughs) Not Julia. That, that would be bad planning. That's a fine way to talk about your sister-in-law. On the contrary. Julia's got a good head on her shoulders. Good teeth in her mouth. <laughs> I dare say. Well, just in case one of them isn't so good. I'm going in and take a shower. I'll see you. Goodbye. Good morning, operator. Uh, run under four, five, seven, seven, one. David, I bet you 20 cents she's here. What do you bet? What makes you so sure? Got a feeling. Miss Punch of 1948. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Julie. Is that you? Claudia. Are you in town? Yes. Are you? Say, you haven't got a toothache or anything, have you? What's that, Len? Oh, nothing. It's just a bet I had with David. When are you going back to Long Island? Not till tonight. What are you doing in town? Just having fun. I'm not going back till tonight either. I'm glad to see you're getting off the farm a little. Don't make it sound so terrible, Julia. (laughs) 
Listen, do you think we can get together sometime? I'd love it. Good. I haven't seen you since the baby. Uh, what are you doing with yourself today? Mm, nothing particular. Except I'm busy till three. Well, then meet me at three. In the Buckingham Grill on the Madison side, I'll have a table. Perfect. I'll meet you at three o'clock. I'm so looking forward to seeing you. It's been an awfully long time since we had a good sisterly and lawyer's talk. Claudia, are you sure you don't want anything to eat? Oh, positive. I'm stuffed. I ate at the hotel. Claudia, tell me your secret. How do you do it? Do what? Oh, look the way you look. Act the way you act. Feel the way you feel. Not me. It's David. <laughs> you really believe that? I don't know what I'd be like without him. I can't even imagine it anymore. It's fantastic. What is... You are. Both of you. It's funny you're saying both of us. I always feel it's one of us. I can't even think of us as separate. Where's Hartley? He stayed out on Long Island. How's his gallbladder? He still has it. Oh, poor Hartley. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't know what he'd do without it anymore. It's got to be rather a pet of his. You know, it's too bad he can't have a dog instead. Maybe that would have done it. But it's too late now. Well, then, you haven't told me what you're doing in town. Just enjoying it. Walking around, looking, and window shopping. Not doing anything. I love New York in the summer. You miss it, don't you? Of course. Oh, I came down yesterday to see Dr. Rowland. Hmm? What did he say? There's not one interesting thing about me. Well, don't look so disappointed. <laughs> I like Dr. Rowland. Oh, I still have to thank you for sending me to him. I'm going to him with my next child, too. I hope you're not going to make me an aunt too many times. At least four times, at least. David's such a wonderful father, I'd hate to waste him on a picky you two or three offspring. Well, don't rush into it, Claudia. You're still young. Well, that's the whole point. I can be all through having children before I'm 30 and a grandmother by 40. Are you trying to break a record or something? I might have thought I hadn't thought of it. Well, don't be so <laughs> ambitious. You make me feel a hundred. <laughs> Now, tell me what else you did in town. Well, we decided to stay in for dinner in the night. Just for the change. We hadn't planned it that way. Well, I suppose you do get a little tired of being up on the farm with nothing but animals and fields I around. love it. Especially now with the baby. And, of course, Mama's there. I'm not alone at all. I couldn't live that way. Maybe you could have if you'd started out wanting to. Or if Hartley wanted to. Maybe Hartley did. Sometimes I think he did, but it's too late now. And it's certainly not the life for me. I need people around, things to do. I must have work and obligations to keep me busy mentally. You've got such energy, Julia. I don't need anything, just a few people. I'm trying to remember if I was ever like that. I don't think I ever was. Even when you were first married? Oh, maybe then, a little, but... Somehow it changed. That's when you started being busy. Mm-hmm. And Hartley acquired a gallbladder. Strange, life is. Does it always have to end up differently than the way you want it to? If you don't watch it very closely, it does. I refuse to even think about it. You be stubborn about it, Lamb. I will. Don't let the things you want escape you. I remember 20 years ago. I'd been married two years. I wanted to go to Europe for the spring and summer. Hartley wanted to go on a motor trip to California. You know, staying here and there by the road, moving around a lot, roughing it. I couldn't see it, so I went to Europe, alone. It was a dreadful summer. I don't think I'd ever have to make a choice like that. But you have, already. I have? Buying the farm. You didn't want to, you told me so. But I knew what I wanted. I'd chosen before I had to choose. All I wanted was David. No, that's not right. All I wanted was David happy. You're very generous. Not a bit of it. It's the only way I know to really keep him, to keep us. I guess I never had what you two have from the very start. It's always been a matter of choices. I'm not as clever as you are, Julia. I, I couldn't live that way. No, you're too clever ever to have to. So you're a farmer now, and you like it. I love it. 
The way you were talking about New York a moment ago, I thought you'd decided your heart belonged to the big city. Oh, just in passing. Oh, don't think I don't love coming down here, going to the theater, dining out, staying in a hotel. But that's not real. I mean, it's more like overnight in a fairy tale. It's, it's not us. And the farm is us. All us. Our land, our house, David's dreams, hopes, our son's roots, future. That's our world. Acres and acres of it. When we're there, there's no pretending about life like in New York. There, we're, we're living it. I think you'd do the same thing all over again. This time I'd know from the beginning that the way David did, that it was right. I have appointments, Hartley has a gallbladder, and you... I should be very jealous of you, Claudia. If I weren't so fond of you, I probably would be. Julia, now you're teasing me. <laughs> I wish I were. Telephone for Mrs. Norton. I'll plug it in right here. Oh, for me? The call is for Mrs. David Norton. For me? It sounds suspiciously, Lamb, as if you were having an affair with your husband. You're very smart, Julia. Hello, darling. Is it you? Hello. How many darlings are there in your life? Only one. How soon will you be through at the office? You said this morning that you'd be busy until around six. Oh, well, I, I, I changed my mind. I'm ready to go now. David, I'm all through with New York. Well, I'm sure New York will be sorry to hear that. What's the big rush? It's only half past three. David, I want to go back to Eastbrook. To Eastbrook? There's a whole world waiting for us. Do you, do you understand? I think so. But won't this, um... This whole world that you're talking about, won't it wait until about six o'clock? It might not. I'd rather not take a chance. Never take a chance with happiness. Well, now, let's see. I'm, uh, I'm just about through here. I have a couple more things to do. Then I'll pick you up at the corner of Madison Avenue and 58th Street in 15 minutes. Fifteen minutes. I'll be ready and waiting, David. Always. Isn't it convenient to be able to stop in the midst of shopping, put a nickel in a Coke cooler, and enjoy the pause that refreshes? Many stores are now putting Coca-Cola coolers not only in the departments where people do the most shopping, but where they have to wait for service as well. Store managers apparently realize that you wait much more patiently when you wait refreshed. Hello, Mr. King. It's good uh, to see you again. Mrs. Norton, how are you? Been having a good summer? All fine and hot. Started out rainy, but it's making up for it now. Tell me something. Claudia really doesn't feel isolated living in Eastbrook. I, I suppose she does at times, but it never lasts. I couldn't do it. Now, you'd be surprised how active Eastbrook is, even in the midst of the quietest night. I would be surprised indeed. Then come around tomorrow and learn. I'll do that. Goodbye, Mr. King. Goodbye, Mrs. Norton. As I was about to say... Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.